All right, hey guys, uh, Scott with Football Scoop. Today I've got Ian Pace, uh, offensive grad assistant up at uh, Bowling Green with us. How are you, bud? I'm good, Scott. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, absolutely. Hey, uh, a couple of coaches from up there reached out and said uh, I should ask you to come on and tell us a little bit about yourself, so uh, I'm happy to hear it. Give me the story. Where is, uh, where's Ian Pace come from? I was born in Avon Lake, Ohio. It's a west side suburb of Cleveland. Uh, played for high school coach uh, David DeLugas. Um, very successful high school program. I was team captain my senior year. We went to the state title. Lost a game my last two years of uh, high school. We were 29 and one, so it was you know we didn't really know what losing was about. So we we're excited about that. Uh, and from there, I actually was very fortunate how I got to college. Um, my tailback had sent out a bunch of highlight tapes. Uh, he rushed for 4,000 some yards a senior year, and a coach from Fordham University uh, in the Bronx actually uh, gave me a call because I, to be honest with you, our, after our state title game, I thought my football career was over. Uh, he called me. Asked me if I wanted to come on an official visit. Being from a small town, I kind of was clueless as to what that was. Uh, went up to the Bronx, and about two days later, I uh, committed there and uh, started for three years there at guard and tackle um, on the offensive line, obviously. And um, had enjoyed my time. Walked for uh, current Arizona Cardinal player John Skelton. So yeah. it was obviously a fun experience. Uh, though I did at Fordham get to see what the business was about. Played for two different staffs. Um, Got to thank, obviously, all of those guys. Uh, coach Ed Foley, who recruited me. Uh, coach Thomas Sella, who was my coach while I was there. And uh, my offensive line coach, uh, Ed Argast, who was a great man. And uh, I'm lucky to have gotten to experience coaching through those guys. Yeah, that's a great uh, set of guys to learn from. Yeah, oh, yeah. Got some legends there. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I mean, learning from Coach Kloss and Warner Jiro is uh, it's a lifetime experience, once in a lifetime. So. All right, so how'd, so you played for them, and how did you get back to Bowling Green? Uh, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I was searching, obviously, every uh, Division One, One AA, Two, Three school I could find on the internet, looking to try to get into this profession. And um, a mentor of mine uh, had suggested maybe I look for mutual contacts, whether it be through college, uh, coach himself, someone. So I uh, found uh, Bowling Green's website, and the wide receivers coach, Mark Carney, was a Fordham grad. He was a very successful quarterback there. Shot him an email and. Um, didn't think much of it at the time. Uh, about three weeks after that initial email, he got back to me. He said, sorry, we don't have anything right now, but please stay in touch. So uh, I just kept emailing him once, twice, every couple weeks. And uh, finally, about July of 2009, an opportunity came available. And it was, like I mentioned, uh, it's an, it was an off-the-field role, working an academic uh, liaison between our associate AD for student-athlete services and our football program here. And I... Uh, and I just busted my tail doing that. Just trying to follow that, uh, be the first one in, the last one out mantra. And I uh, did everything I could and was promoted to the offensive graduate assistant. So. You know, Ian, what you just said there is so important, I think, for a lot of guys to hear. Uh, and I hear this a lot and I talk about this a lot. You've got to find and develop a relationship with guys. It's the only, it, it's the best way to get on. Uh, so, you know, you reach out to uh, Coach Carney, you, know, you develop the rapport, you know, Fordham guy, Fordham guy, and, and you're persistently polite, you know, continuing to contact him. Yeah. But you're also, you're humble and you're willing to accept what they have to offer. So they offer you an academic job. You take it and so you're about to start, what, your fourth year there? Yes. yes. It's a great story. So give me that again. So we start off uh, in an, ac you start off in an academic position. What were you doing? And then what's the transition to where you are now? My role there was a, I would do daily class checks, uh, pair weekly academic reports, similar to almost identically to what an academic liaison will do at a 1AA school. Um, I just kept the staff informed on how everybody was doing and uh, academically and if there was anything I could do in terms of finding tutors through our uh, student athlete services on campus, I would do that. I just tried to do everything the full-time staff had asked of me to make sure they were fully aware of where everybody was at academically. So I did that and um, from there, you know, I just, uh, Coach Lawson said, Boston, my town, I did a great job, and he offered me the uh, role of uh, offensive graduate assistant. And it took me probably all of two seconds to say yes. Uh, <laughs> I want this really badly. And um, since then, I just I, uh, transitioned from there for the following fall, and I started my work with the offensive line. I love the position, played it in college, like I said. Uh, and I just I love being around that group of guys because that's a different group, obviously. You know, all right, so what year did you start with the offensive line? Uh, 10. Season of 2010, 
we struggled immensely. Obviously, we were a two and ten football team. Um, a lot of that was because we were so young. Um, we played a true freshman at a left guard for the entire year. So, you know, the baptism by fire roll right there. Yeah. But uh, it's the great thing is we just kept building and building and building. And uh, hopefully this 2012 season will be a reflection of all the building that's been done under uh, Coach Clawson and our staff here. So so how much of your role uh, continues to be with the offensive line versus other position groups? You know, to be honest with you, that's my goal in this, in, like, in this profession. Like, selfishly, I know it's... It's, it's what I want to do. I want to coach the five guys up front. Yeah. So uh, I've been very fortunate that the offensive line coach, Bill Durkin, uh, has allowed me to take guys, we'll divide the group up five and five, five and seven, whatever the numbers may be that given practice. Uh, he's allowed me to run meetings with the younger guys to explain our offense, which, you know, uh, I watched your article about taking the D2 or the 1AA job or the 1AGA job. I've been fortunate because these guys have tried to set me up in a position where I'm prepared that next, uh, following next season, hopefully a bowl game, and MAC title, whatever it may be, yeah. I'll be able to be a full-time positional coach, be ready to go. So I was that's very fortunate. All right, bud, so give me, give me the, why you do this? Why do you love this? You know, you say that's, it's your life dream to, to coach the big five up front. You know, where's that passion come from? Uh, you know, um, I grew up in a single parent household with my mother. Uh, she, she raised my brother and I, uh, to be hard workers and, to just give everything we have to whatever it is we're doing. And that work ethic she instilled in me, I applied to the game of football. Uh, f- for what reason? You know, it was just, I was a big kid growing up. I, mean, I was always a bigger guy, so it just appealed to me, obviously. Um, and I took that as a player, and then as a collegiate player, and now I'm trying to be as a coach. And, you know, um, her wisdom, passing that on to me and all that, is just something I, I wanted to bring to these kids because it's ultimately about the kids. I mean, my buddies tell me how much money they make. I, I really could care how much money I make. It's the opportunity to get to take what you've learned and experienced. And although I'm only 25, there's something I've done as a player, a person that I can pass on to these 18, 19, 20 year olds. And to be honest, I think I have some credibility when I say it because I'm relatively close in age to them. And it's not like I'm their dad talking down to them. Maybe like you get with an older coach. I'm, I am, you know, I'm, I uh, was you two years ago, guy. I was you three years ago. And so I, I believe I have some credibility. And, uh, you know, just to make a difference, in, if, even if it's just one kid's life. If I spend the next 25, 30 years doing this, one guy calls me 20 years down the road and says, you know what, that day you said this to me, that was a life-changing moment. I'll, I mean, I'll be able to go to sleep at, in peace and be able to say I did something truly valuable in my life and my career. Ian, it's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to hear hear from you, meet you, and uh, the stuff I've heard from the coaching staff's been uh, fantastic. And I appreciate them reaching out to us to uh, ask us to get you on. It's uh, it's been a pleasure, bud. Oh, thank you so much again. So appreciative, and uh, I love what you're doing for uh, the GAs, obviously. So uh, thank you, and uh, look forward to following the rest of them. You got it, bud. We'll talk to you soon. All right, bye bye.